Welcome to the tips, tricks and news for modern software developers. I'm Simon and I like Star Wars. Why is this important? Well, I recently got a little, well, it's actually not that little, Star Wars tattoo and I thought, well, this is with me forever and forever is something we can't really say about a lot of things in software development. Do you still remember like Web3? Probably not. So Web3, crypto, everything was very hot last year and I thought about how I wanted to get into it and do a few tutorials and I really liked it, but now I see a lot of people moving away from Web3 already maybe so I don't really know what the future for Web3 is currently but at the moment it feels like it's basically going that direction. So is there actually anything we can certainly make a safe bet on anymore? We're gonna talk about all of this and what I learned in the last month in today's episode. <laughs> Because I know that Ionic might not be around forever, I took a closer look at React Native and Flutter over the last time. So talking about things that are forever, we can't be sure that any of those approaches will be around forever, just like we can't actually be sure that Swift or anything will be around forever. We always thought maybe Objective-C is there to stay, but then we got Swift, so everything is a constant change. So. I also took a look at those cross-platform frameworks lately. I built the same application with all three frameworks, like uh, one with Capacitor, one with React Native, and one with Flutter. If you're interested in Flutter, I think the video just came out this week. Definitely go check it out. I had a lot of fun using Flutter, and the comparison of those three tools will come in about two weeks. It will be a pretty long video because I tried to fit all the experiences that I had with these tools, like building this application, into that video. Is there a winner to this? Let's usually the question, what's the best framework, what's the best crop plus framework, like what should we learn and use? It depends, <laughs> like always it depends, but in my video I will give some recommendations because I think the different tools, Flutter, Capacitor, React Native, shine in different areas, so I think we can have like a little recommendation for these tools when they are best to use, but no overall like who wins, because that's just not possible. Flutter is good at this, Capacitor is good at that, and it just depends on what your priorities for a specific project are. And although I don't know if there will be any kind of winner, it currently looks like Flutter has the upper hand because Flutter actually surpassed React Native in installations and in popularity in the recent Stack Overflow survey. So probably Flutter is winning, but I don't know what we're gonna see in the future. So like always, it really depends and is up to you. I don't think your time learning any of these tools is wasted because either of them have uh, great ideas. Uh, you might learn React or you might learn Dart, so that's always something for the future anyway. Talking of speaking things and fragile things, I made a lot of progress on the Banana Project. So last month I shared that actually I think first time I said this is the Banana Project and probably in around December or maybe even early, yeah, maybe in December, uh, I will share the real name of the project. We've made a lot of progress, Brad and I are uh, working on the project. I implemented a lot of things with SwellKit lately, especially how to combine Superbase and Stripe to have like user authentication, account creation, and I built this network of cloud functions and webhook triggers and I explained everything on our podcast with Simon. But I found this to be really cool, that it works, that it's free, that you can do stuff like that. On the other hand, this is so fragile and it feels like if just one party changes an API or a parameter, the whole system just comes down and I gotta live with this. And it doesn't feel too good to be honest, you have this kind of fragile system. So I don't know how to handle this in the future. It's just there's always two sides of the same coin. Is it what you call? I don't know. I'm not a native English speaker. But the question is just how stable is this? I don't know. Uh, but using it feels great. Um, there's a great simplicity to all of this. But yeah, on the other hand, if something goes wrong, let's just hope it's not happening. And so in the beginning, I said Web3 is kind of disappearing slowly and people are turning away from it. On the other hand, there's something new coming right into the view, which is AI. Well, yeah, it's not new machine learning and stuff like that. It's not new, but through the rise of stuff like DALI, where you can get this cool graphics generated with AI, you can create like content writing, stuff like copy for a website with AI. 
it's currently more like this, more like Flutter. Um, so I wonder, is AI the next Web3? Again, a lot of people jumping onto this, creating projects around it, like copywriting, automatic generation of tweets, and pretty much everything you can do with AI. And I also talked with Simon on the pod about this topic recently. You should definitely check it out. Link below the video to the podcast. All the codes, look it up, and uh, we're gonna drop two episodes every week. You should subscribe. It's epic, just like this channel. But the problem is, I've seen this rise with AI, with Web3 and crypto as well, and everyone was excited, and this is the future. And is AI now also the future? Uh, everything? I don't know. I just fear to get more into it. Uh, I'm sure it is super interesting, machine learning, and I'm also sure at the same time that some of these parts will stay forever. For example, if I use my camera on the iPhone, that's also AI. It's optimizing the images using AI. So AI is not really something we need to fear, although it says like artificial intelligence, but I discussed it with Simon as well. It's not really intelligence compared to what you and I can do. Like GitHub Copilot can give you some code, but then it's not too good. And are uh, you as a developer, I don't think we're gonna be replaced. So AI, Another interesting topic, but is it here to stay? I don't know. Any time we spend on all of these tools, it's so hard to say if it's worth. Is it worth to learn Flutter? I don't know, might disappear in a few years. Is it worth to learn crypto, Web3 or AI? I don't know, it could disappear in like a month or years from now. So for all of these things, I think it's best to just see your time investment into them as like always or constantly learning. If you're getting into AI, you're probably picking up Python, that's cool. If you're getting into Flutter, you're probably learning Dart as a language. That's cool. If you're learning React Native, well, you learn another framework for JavaScript and pick up React. That's cool as well. So don't judge these different things about how likely they will be there in the future, but probably more about what you can learn from them and what you can take away, even if they disappear in two, three, one year. So that's my takeaway from the last month. And also finally, I also quit using Arc because I couldn't stand it. So much for change and using something new. It just didn't work out for me. I don't know if it does for you, but I figured out that Arc is probably not for me. And now I have like five different Chrome windows open and I feel so good about it. All right, and that's it once again for today. I really hope I can stay a bit more healthy over the next time, but just like everything in software development and web development, I can't be certain of that. So I just need to live with whatever comes. But I'm very sure that I want to make a lot more progress on the banana project. I really do hope I can share the name with you soon. I'm actually kind of fear that I want to that I say the name out loud because then you're going to find it in the landing page already. So I hope I can share that maybe before the end of the year with you. On top of that, I definitely want to bring back the live stream pretty soon. So uh, when I feel good, we're going to have more live streams. Remember Thursday live stream. And finally, what I also want to add is there will be a great array of content. So we're going to talk about Superbase. We're going to talk about AppRide. Uh, just talked about Flutter as well. We're going to have a comparison about the cross-platform framework tool. So a lot of content coming in the next month. So stay subscribed to the channel. If you enjoyed the episode, also click the like video and then I will hopefully catch you in the next video. So until then, as always, happy coding, Simon.